And then cook it again. Um, and, and the end, like, 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 but then put an air into the fire and then you can go in and try to build up the temperature. Try it. Dad, darling, what's that? In the Roman day, someone would just sit there going Yeah, the slave would do that. And that's what the slaves used to do with boring jobs. The whole thing. What's that, man? Oh, yes, it is. You're live. Exactly, that's why I said you're live. Okay. Right, well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and ready, uh, well, welcome to Ready Steady Cook. Shall we have a look at what we will be cooking? Ellie, I'll need you in a minute. Oh, look! We have kidney, we have liver, and um, let's start cooking. What else do we have? We must have some veggies. We do. Got some mushrooms here, and I think what we could do with those is cook them off in some honey. It's a very popular dish, so we may as well go for it. How can you? Ah. I've done them. Right. Um, the Romans basically cooked with five liquids: uh, honey, olive oil, vinegar, wine, and fish sauce. This is an experience you'll not forget in a hurry. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I was telling you about. Where's my friend who thinks we eat slugs? <laughs> there you are, what do you think of that? Oh! And this is not <laughs> rotten fish. What it is, is salted fish, and there is a chemical reaction, and, oh, I'm making the bad noise. <laughs> it's chemical reaction, and this is the liquid that's produced. Anybody need a smell? I don't think you missed too much there, James. Yes. I think it smells too nice. Interestingly, for all you people who went there, if you've ever, ever eaten any Vietnamese food, you've eaten this. There's a little bit of that in there. And then, here, yeah, check the time, the honey. Bit of honey. And what the fish sauce does, because in the Roman period, salt was very, very expensive because it's very labour intensive. That is very easy to make. So it was used as a salt substitute. I can't get the word for it. Right, so, the, the joy of this recipe, you can chuck these mushrooms on, you can go out, you can come back, you can move house, you can have children, your children can graduate from university and these mushrooms will still be sat there. <laughs> Hideous thing. <laughs> right, and I think, with our liver and kidney, those were considered um, a delicacy because usually you'd have to fight off the priest. Early, could you do me a favour? 
could you guys... That is that. And can you remember what goes? <laughs> I don't know. Oh. Right, with our level, what I'm going to do is marinate it again with a little bit of fish sauce. And I'm also going to use this which is lovage seed. Um, if you wanted to recreate this recipe at home, you didn't have lovage because you don't live next door to a man for Roman reenactor, you can use celery seed. So then we'll chuck our liver in there. And what you can do with this, if you're having a barbecue, is skewer it and make kebabs. I still felt it's not happening. <laughs> so if we just let that sit for a few minutes, and we'll move on to our kidneys. Does everybody know how to prepare a kidney? Mm. I did save one, and now I've got one of it. Oh, there we go. Mm. Cut your lip kidney practically all the way through, and there is a thing of fat that you need to take out, because it's not very nice. And what I'm going to do is, we're going to stuff this with some coriander, some pine kernels, and then I'm going to wrap it in this stuff, which is cool, it's the lining of the stomach. The kidneys are lamb's kidneys, the liver is ox liver. Are you nearly there with that? You'd never see Anthony Worrell Thompson beggaring about like this, would you? There you go. About. Would anybody like to try some Roman flatbread? Yes. This is flavoured with cumin seed, which was cooked this morning. Yes, it's, it's what we call unleavened bread, there's no yeast in it. The Romans did know about yeast. And they did make eleven bread, but they also made unleavened bread. And you would usually find a baker next to a brewery for the yeast. Right, let's. Let's give you some of this. Who likes to try some bread? It's got no slips in it. It's a slug for his own. Do you want to try a bit, Jess? Oh, no, no. Thank you very much, Liz. Push your tour. Any more for the more? There you are. I've got more, so don't panic. Oh, yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> right. Oh, could you hand this out? Yeah. So the first thing I'm not saying because I don't have any. Right, okay. Um, so, my colleague here has very beautifully ground up pine nuts. Again, we'll put a little bit of fish sauce in. Oops, sorry. 
And what I'll do is get off a little bit of the stuffing inside. And then we can use this, which is the call. Um, if you haven't got call and you haven't got a very good butcher, you can always use cocktail sticks. <laughs> Just do a couple and then we can get hands on to heat. Three. The Roman diet is, is particularly healthy because they didn't have as much processed food and they didn't have as much sugar as we tend to eat today. They did know about sugar cane but it wasn't used um, for food, it was given to children who were teething. Which always strikes me as a good idea. Can you put another pan on? Yeah. As I say, these mushrooms are sort of doing their own thing. Yeah, just put it on there. Oh. Right, the other little delicacy, if anybody's interested, we'd like a little middle eight, is we have a cheese here that comes from a writer, a gentleman called Cato, not as in the Pink Panther, and he describes a farmer making his breakfast. And this is a piece of Parmesan cheese and a ball of garlic and some coriander. So, anybody want to be brave to try this? <laughs> A bit of bread, isn't it? And this is quite powerful stuff. Here we have some Anybody else want to try some? Um, garlic was not considered a high status food. In fact, it was considered a peasant's food. And we do know that the Ampinero, bless him, he used to dress up as a peasant and go down to the Sabora at night and start fights. Um, and he would eat garlic and then fed it to gladiators. It is quite um, <laughs> There were no vampires in the Roman period. <laughs> Yeah. I'll make it back. <laughs> right, let's get some food on. Olive oil um, was used for everything. It wasn't just for cooking, it was used for lighting, it was used Oh, I've gone off. Oh, no, I haven't. Uh, it was used for lighting, it was used for cosmetics, it was used in medicine, it was used for everything. And she's got kidneys over here. Oh, she's very efficient. She's got some oil in the pan. She doesn't normally. The reason you need to keep the kidneys together is otherwise, if you're not careful, all your beautifully squished up stuffing will come out. But like I say, you can just sort of pin it together with um, cocktail sticks. Um, things that the Romans didn't eat, we had no potatoes, we only had pork, uh, white carrots, 
Orange carrots came in in the medieval period when a Dutchman, would you believe, crossed an Afghan purple carrot with a European white carrot and got an orange carrot. And the thing is not predictable. Um, yes. Also, um, dormice. I am on a one woman mission to get rid of this rumour. They did eat dormice, I'm not disputing it, we have recipes. But they were very, very rare. You would have to have been stinkingly rich. So when you watch Hollywood and they're all there eating dormice in the bathhouse, mm -hmm. do you know that snacks were sold at the bathhouse? The bathhouse at Curlion, one of the drains was actually blocked with um, chop bones and they'd obviously been eating them, chucking them away, and it blocked a drain. Let's see how we're going on. Do you all like offal? Well, yesterday's crowd was incredibly brave and they tried it and ate the lot. So... Well, we're having an absolute nightmare with the fires today because the atmospherics are stopping them burning. What well, producing any heat, it's only one. I'll go on. I can talk and just give a bit of a hump. It's stewing. Right, um, so yes, dormice are very, very expensive. Um, if you can imagine in Rome, um, the, there were some apartment blocks, you can still see them. I don't know whether you ever watched um, Eat the Romans with Mary Beard, and she showed off some of the apartment blocks that are in Rome. Well, these were not particularly well built. And they kept going on fire and burning down. So all of the emperors said, right, that is it. Anybody who lives in a tenement cannot have a fire in their house. So they couldn't cook. So what became very popular is what this is. It's called a pepina. And it's a fast food restaurant. And in it, you can get burgers, or what we would call them, a sikia, which is chopped meat served in a bun. I, I often like to think that some pepina owner was like, I've got some dodgy beef, what shall I do? I know, the bloke next door said it'll never catch on, that though. <laughs> but you could also, you could come down with your pot and I would give you stew or whatever and you'd take that home and eat. Some of them had restaurants attached and these ranged. There were some very, very nice, very high class restaurants and there were some that there wasn't just food on the menu, let's put it that way. <laughs> but yeah, I think oh, things are burning over, burning. Okay. The Romans um, brought to England, the idea, or to Britain, the idea of different courses. Before the Romans came, we would be doing one pot cooking in a cauldron. And personally, I see nothing. Again, haven't I? Oh, I've gone. Oh, I've gone. I have, haven't I? Oh, well, I'll just shout. Um, yeah, gone. I mean, I don't see anything wrong with one pot cooking, but the Romans, being the Romans, you have to start having three meals a day and courses. The cooker that we've got our kidneys on is based on a cooker that was found in Pompeii. Um, it was found in a garden, so it would appear that 2,000 years ago, men were saying, I know, we'll barbecue. So the wife goes off to the market, buys all the stuff, prepares it all, and then he sits there with a the beer and cooks it. Um, as far as we know, as far as we know, the Romans didn't do spit cooking either. The ancient Britons did. The Romans didn't because they had their own cookers. They had proper ovens. 
we go up. So we've got ovens that can be used on the go, as it were. And this is such a thing, it's called the testament. And you put it on the fire, you cover it in hot charcoal, you can get it up to about a gas mark six. It does get very hot. I've put bread in there, leavened bread. We've even put lots of meat in it. And it's heavy. Get off. Right, how are we doing with that? Right. Um, what else have we got that you can show? Would anybody like to try one of these wretched mushrooms? No, it's not. Oh, I can come now and not make that noise. Anybody like to try any mushrooms? because then you can try something else later. <laughs> 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 Any more for mushrooms? 
Sweet stuff, isn't it? Mm. Oh. Oh. I can almost, what was I saying before? I can't remember. You're buying a slave, are you? Sorry? You're buying a slave. <laughs> oh, yeah, I wouldn't mind a slave actually, but they're very different. Yeah, they can get their tights. Sorry? They can get their tights. You're ready. One next. They can get their tights. Right, well, we, the liver is almost ready, so we can have a little taste of that if anybody would like to try that. Anybody brave enough to try liver? Can you have a look see if I can? I've just turned them over. Oh, okay. Okay, this shell that the embryo should be a quick. Anyone see that? But in fact, how much that this would have been doing by Rogan's one. Anybody want to try some of them? Never anybody? You'll be on your feet getting your dad some leather now. <laughs> it's very nice. Never anybody? I'm no. I'm dead. Anybody? No. Oh, well, you're all a bunch of cowards. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. Never trust a cook who won't eat their own food. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Is anybody going to be brave enough to try some kidney? Wow, that's hot. The Romans used to like to disguise the taste of food. There is a recipe from the period and it says give this to your guests, they'll have no idea what they're eating. <laughs> As we would like to do a... Uh, we like to do a roast and we like everybody to say what a nice tender roast. Not so the Romans. <laughs> to the Romans there was nothing clever in producing food that tasted of what it was. Much better to have it tasting of something else, looking like something else. The, the fundamental flavours are sweet and sour. If you can imagine a Chinese restaurant but on speed, that is Roman high status cuisine. They were using an awful lot of spices and it wasn't, people have said to me, was it because the meat wasn't fresh? Well, you wouldn't eat rotten meat, so why would the Romans? It was purely to show wealth. Same in the medieval period, and more or less up to the present day. But they would use alternatives as well. This is lovage. It's part of the celery family. But it does have a peppery taste. And we have a recipe book from the period which mentions lovage in no less than 76 recipes. So it was really popular. It is very easy to grow. It will take over your garden. It will take over your world. But it is 
it is good to use in food. I mean, I use it all the time in soups and stews, and because he doesn't eat celery, so it's a good substitute. Um, other herbs that were very popular in the period, I haven't got any, it was coriander. Coriander grew in this country naturally and wildly till the Ice Age, and then it was wiped out. The Romans brought it back. The only herb that they were not particularly keen on, that was basil. They believed that if you ate basil, it would send you mad. These from the people who eat stuffed starlings. <laughs> um, they did use basil, they did feed basil, but they fed it to the horses or to stallions as an aphrodisiac. Little people can look better when they get home. <laughs> if you're interested, ladies and gentlemen, we do have a recipe the only recipe that isn't on there is for the garlic cheese, but that's on our website, which is www.romanarmy.net. I don't know how many times I've ever said that. <laughs> so has anybody any questions about Roman food? Anybody dying to know something? Anybody? Those <laughs> questions. So would you like to be a Roman? Be able to eat chocolate? Didn't have chocolate? Anybody else? Chocolate, what would you have done? Wouldn't have crisps? Should we get the next question? 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 Right, this kidney will come eventually, people. Just bad on top of your head. Yeah, chop my head off. Is that before or after I drive you home? Okay. Oh, so the, the website's on there as well. Thank you. I think the website's on there. It is, it? yes, yeah. Well, I'm trying to yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, that's the thing about your high state Roman that they could import the food from all across the empire. And so they had, if you were rich, you had a very mixed uh, diet of lots of different food. Um, People have also asked me in the past if Romans were vegetarians, not by choice. <laughs> if you were rich, you might be. You'd be following some of the great philosophers. The most normal people. I didn't think about it. I'm not going to fly. Is it peach? Uh, Pat, 